So you guys know I'm always on the lookout for the best hardware you can get for the cheapest amount of money. One of the main things I've focused on is oscilloscopes. So at the moment, the cheapest I've ever found is the Picascope. So the low-end Picascope, and I think it's 10 megahertz, 25 megahertz I've got in my hand, but I think we sell the 10 megahertz one. And it's about 140 pounds. And it does the job good enough to pretty much diagnose every retro console and modern console that we use for nearly every signal. You can also go higher end than that and faster, and I have scopes worth tens of thousands of pounds. But most of the time, I can get away with just using the lowest end Picascope. Now, £140 is still quite a bit of money for some of you guys, especially if you're doing this as a hobby. So I'm always on the lookout for cheaper scopes. I recently reviewed the Pocket oscilloscope, that turned out to be just a pile of junk, like most of them. And the problem you find with most oscilloscopes is simply that. They lie about the specs. They're nowhere near as fast or as accurate as they claim to be. So until now, Picascope's been king, if you will. However, as you can see in front of me, I've got a hand tech over here. So similar to the Picascopes I use, the 6022BE, which is a 20 megahertz, which should in theory uh, be as good as the Picascope we have here to test. And we also have the top end one, which is the 6254BD, and that's 250 megahertz, which is faster than uh, pretty much any scope I've got out at the moment. And then we've even got a bench one, because I'm not that keen on bench oscilloscopes. But this one does something that none of my other bench scopes do, and you'll see that shortly. So even my 5,000, 10,000 pound scopes still have an issue that makes me never use them, and this one doesn't. So the purpose of this is to review these Hantech scopes. Now, as you can see, I already sell them because I've already reviewed them myself and used them to confirm they are good. And until now, the cheapest oscilloscope that was of use was the speaker scope. And look at what price you can now get an oscilloscope that performs exactly the same, if not better, than the Picascope. It's literally less than half price. We've then got the high-end one, and we've also got the bench one. So this £66 scope is the main one that I find is very useful and very exciting for you guys to now be able to grab a scope for £66 and be able to diagnose. So with that, let's just take a look at the scopes. What we're comparing to is... Uh, the Picascope that you know and you can buy that we use in most videos. So I'm just going to plug that one in now and just pull it up on screen. And I've got an Atari 2600 in front of me. I'm just making a video composite mod at the moment. So it's perfect time and this is what I've been testing the Hantex on as well. Got some fairly high speed signals. And what we're going to do is show you what these signals look like on the Picascope that we know works well. And that's what I use for most things. So if we just probe, say, the sync pin, you can see we've got the sync pin here. Now we go, say, let's a full frame in there. That's a good idea. So like 10 microsecond divisions. If we go to some Luma signals, you can see similar data. And if we go to the color or the chroma of the uh, video signal, this is where the high speed will really come in. So this is the color burst information in composite and S video. 500 nanoseconds here to capture. You can see this curve here of the actual data and that I believe is actually part of the Atari so that's not a slowdown in speed on the scope and I know that because I've used my much higher speed Pika scope to confirm that so this is actually how the Atari looks so it's important to see do we get this kind of shape now we have a known board Pika scope that we can compare to let's compare that signal with the Hantech so I'll just put this Pika scope aside for a moment and let's first grab the cheaper hand tech. So this is the £66 hand tech. And you can see it's 20 megahertz. So the scope I've just used is actually 25. So in theory, this should show at least as good as this scope. Let's plug it in. So the thing you'll find with the scopes on the hand tech is they are good. They're far from cheap. The cable feels nice. But compared to, say, my high-end Picascope probes, uh, they don't quite feel as uh, premium. And it's not to say these feel cheap, they definitely don't. But there is a noticeable difference with the feel of, say, the ground clip on the Picascope is a proper ground clip. And on the Hantex, it's a crocodile clip. So there's some minor um, things to be aware of when you come to buy the Hantex. But again, bear in mind, you're paying £66 for this. And that scope I just showed you the lead to is thousands. So there's... You know, there's a reason for slightly cheaper prices. So for this Hantech one, I'm just going to connect the ground up. 
make sure to download the 6022 BE software specifically. Uh, there's different versions of software for each scope at the moment. Once installed, you'll get this icon on the desktop and you can see it says Handtech 6022 BE. And we also offer the 6000, which is the more expensive series. So if we double click on the 6022 BE. I'm going to set up the time division to about 10 microseconds like we had before for channel one. And we have a trigger set already. So if we now probe the sync pin. Uh, you can see the signal there. Let me just lower the voltage divisions and I can bring down the signal. And let's just increase again. So there's roughly the similar to what we had. We have um, a full frame fit on. And you can see again the signal looks nice and sharp, looks very similar. Go to the Luma, looks similar. And go to the Chroma. And now you can see a noticeable difference in the chroma. So for the chroma pin at least, you can tell there's actually uh, not as clear a data, basically. It's still there and completely usable. But if we just pause this a minute, let's try and get it on some full chroma data. You can see the resolution of these ups and downs is much smaller. It's just about detecting the ups and downs of the chroma. And then for here, we're not quite sure what's going on. So it's got good enough resolution and very similar to the Picascope. I'd say if anything else, it's maybe, and this could just be the visual on the screen, it's maybe slightly less resolution. But bear in mind that would make sense because uh, this 66 pound one is 20 megahertz and the one I just showed you is actually a 25 megahertz, not even the 10 megahertz we sell for 140. So I'd say this is at least performing to the 20 megahertz spec. And it's also more than good enough to see the signals we need. So you can probe around here and kind of trust what you're seeing, which is great. There is a clock signal. So if we went faster. You can see the signal there is nice and clean still. So that will be the main pixel clock. So it's certainly performing more than adequately for what we need. Which now means you can get a scope for £66 that does everything you need. So now we looked at this one, which is a perfect alternative to the cheapest Picascope. Let's take a look at the highest end PC oscilloscope. Uh, we go to the Lumas, it's easy, the clock. So now let's see if the clock is any more clear on the tight signals. So if we go to one microsecond there, you can see a noticeable difference now. If we just bring that down and pause that signal, you can see it's nice and clear. It's like the Picascope was. It's very methodically detailed. Uh, you can tell that what you're seeing on screen is accurate. If we go even faster, you can see it goes nice and fast. And even right down to a close-up, you're getting a good clean signal. Go to the clock, and you can see the clock there has got some skew on here. So this is the resolution of the clock. So what we could do is grab a measurement. Uh, let's put a horizontal in. Grab a cursor, let's just put a cross in, and let's go here to here. In fact, you can also do measure horizontal frequency. You can see the frequency is only a megahertz. So that's not super fast. And in fact, the clock is probably quicker than that, which it is. But I know the clock does look like that based on the Picascope. So my betting is this signal does look like this. So again, nothing more to really see other than the clarity of the signal and that it does its job. So again you can probe around anywhere on the board and get your data. Let's go to some cartridge connector, see the game loading. So you can see it's just really handy to be able to see your signals nice and clear and not have to worry about um, whether you can see or not. You can see on the high end version as well you can actually see the noise in the signal here which will actually be interference on one of the lines running close by. So it could be, for example, one of these lines running down here. And then just to compare, this is a 250 megahertz scope with good resolution. So let's just go down to like a, a nice resolution there and pause it. And now we'll just jump over to the final one that we need to review, which is this actual bench one. So the bench one has the benefit of not needing a computer to spin up. It's got the downsides of not being as intuitive on using them in my eyes and the fact that you pay more money for less specs because you have a screen to pay for as well. 
So my main gripe with all bench scopes I own is say we go over a data bin of the cartridge loading some data. Now see how this is actually showing data and it's updating and you can see clearly every step. So if we were to just do a single shot, you can see the data there. Now on my other scopes, every single other scope, including the expensive ones, instead of this being a nice clean visual while it's running, so while this is actually running, instead all the other scopes merge the current frame and 10, 20, 30 previous frames in a kind of overlaid mushy mess and it's not easy to see. Whereas this scope, plus all the PC scopes and the Pika scopes, show the signals individually, nice and clear. So bear in mind this is 150 megahertz, so in between the two. We'll check, we can obviously see nice and clear, uh, as you'd expect, the Luma pin should be there. And again, let's take a look at the chroma data. Now this is the fast traveling signal, so we want to get our horizontal scale as fast as possible. So the changing of scale is a little bit slow, but it does work. And you can see there the resolution, if we freeze that, I'd say the resolution of this to the actual 250 meg is very similar. And for the speed of this clock, there's no noticeable or discernible difference. You've got everything you'd expect from the scope. So you've got your triggers, which move up and down. You've got your scale vertically that you can change. And you can see what I mean about the slowness. It's slightly slow to update when you're turning. So you go between the scales and there's just a little bit of a delay before it kicks in. It's nothing major and it doesn't stop you enjoying it and using it. There's also an auto set, which I rarely use. I expect to find the signal by knowing what I'm doing, basically. So I don't really use auto set, but that seems to work. Zoom out a bit. And there's the color data. And the fun thing here is we can turn off the color on the Atari. And there we go. That's the black and white mode. So when it mixes the chroma signals uh, with the luma signals, um, that's what adds color to your image for composite. You turn it back on, you see the chroma gets overlaid on the luma. So that's just a cool little thing to see. Uh, in terms of measurements, we can just pause that as well. You've got your measure as well, where you can do all your types of measurement that show up on screen. And I believe you can also just do measurement stats, and then everything shows up on screen all at once. So while it's running, you've got a permanent update of all stats going on. So you can see the average is 4.5 volts. The max is 5 volts, which is this line. You've got your frequency. Uh, duty cycles, everything you could imagine there that you need. You can also turn on different stats that are not as intrusive, but all your good ones. So your current voltage, peak to peak, your current frequency, your current average, your min, your max. You've got all all good measurements there, and you can just obviously add one at a time to add these little uh, measurements down the bottom. Your cursors, like you'd expect, so a Y cursor. You can move. You can see the little lights going up and down. You do your measurements. And then between the two lines, say, between those two lines now, all the same stuff as most scopes. The display on this is awesome as well. Really clear, really vibrant. Uh, the probes, like I say, good enough quality, not cheap, not mega expensive. So I'd say personally, if you're not going to use it on PC, the PC software at the minute on the Hantex isn't great. I've got a potential solution for that, me actually making the software because I am a software developer. So I could make some really nice UI that works on um, all the platforms and make this UI much nicer. It's not terrible. It's just, you can see here to change it, time division, it's got this weird draggable bar that is not really, it's trying to simulate what you'd have physically here, but it doesn't really work in the setting of the PC software. It needs a different interface somewhere to the PicoScope. But overall now, we have much better range of options for buying cheaper but quality oscilloscopes. We have two options, the cheaper £66 and the £200-plus Fasti Scope. I'd recommend you start with the £66 or the Bench Scope to begin with, because you'll rarely need this for what most of you do. If you're probing around for pins to find faults in loading, then your £66 scope is more than adequate. I'm getting a lot into the Ataris and the Commodores and things at the moment, so if you have any suggestions on mods you might like to see, or potentially me showing you how to do these kinds of mods, uh, let me know. And hopefully this is a nice unbiased review of some hardware we actually use, and I've finally found a cheaper alternative still to Picascopes to help you guys get into the 
more advanced diagnostics at less price. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next.